Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. I'm going to use verse 19 really as our text verse, but uh, I want to read a few verses to you as we get into the message. Look at verse 41. The Bible says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. You mamas ever lost your young one? I have as a father. Because them jokers can slip away from you before you know it. It says, But they supposed him to have been in the company, and they went a whole day's journey. And when they sought him among their kinfolks and acquaintances, when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. You ever missed him and then you start looking for him? I think we all have. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, this is the way a South Georgia mama would have said it, Boy! Why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold thy father, and I have sought thee sorrowing. Ain't that just like a mama? Me and your, your daddy's going to get you for this, boy. <laughs> and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist not that I must be about my father's business. Look at verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her Look at verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Let's pray together. Father, today we are grateful for godly mothers. Mothers that made a difference in our lives. But then, Lord, our heart is burdened. As we think about those children who maybe never have known a mother, or maybe the kind of love that a mother should have is not that present in their lives. And how heartrending and how heartbreaking that must be. Lord, we pray your blessings upon those who suffer that. And now, Father, as we look at the life of this mother, the mother of our Lord Jesus, help us get a glimpse of what an ideal mother 
is all about. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe we have here depicted before us in these particular passages of Scripture that I've read in your hearing the actions and reactions of a true mother in the face of a problem. I would like to tell you that mothers will never have any problems. But I learned that when young ones come along, Problems can come with children. Somebody just made the statement they don't put a return label on them. And that might be a good thing, amen. <laughs> I take that back. I love my children. But uh, if there's a child, there's going to be a problem. I want you to know that the sinful nature is born in a child. Now, it may not come out until they begin to grow just a little bit, but it will. It will, it will come out. Do you know how I know that? Yesterday, we were reading a few posts, and I think Marta read some of it this morning, that... Uh, Somebody posted something like, write down some of the things that you heard your mama say. And I remember hearing my mother say, boy, be sure your sins will find you out. Anybody ever heard that? I think the one that tickled Marta the most is uh, her mother made a statement similar to this. One day you're going to grow up and you're going to have children and your daughter's going to be just like you. <laughs> and I've learned that we all, we all, I, I got that from my mother too. One day you're going to grow up and you're going to have boys and they're going to be just like you. Well, I'm proud to say that one of my boys turned out pretty good. Just like me. The other one turned out like the young me who wasn't so good. <laughs> but he's good now, thank God. There are several things that I want to point out about this godly mother here. The first thing that we have in this mother, the mother of Jesus, is we have a mother in sorrow. Can you even begin to fathom the tears probably that she began to shed, the sorrow in her heart and the prayers of this broken-hearted mother as, as she began to look for her child among all of the kindred and all of those who had made the trip with them to Jerusalem? Can you even begin to think about that? Listen, the very nature of a mother's position in life means tears, trouble, and heartache. We worry about our children. We fathers worry about our children, but mothers have a deeper, a deeper concern than even a father may have. So here is the mother of Jesus, and we find that Mary is in sorrow. The second thing we see in this mother is that we have a mother that is burdened about her boy. Anybody who, who's got children, from time to time you are burdened about your children. And let me tell you something about being burdened about your children. Every father and mother wants their children to grow up and to be successful in life. One of the things that comes back to mind that I heard from my mother and father more than anything else was, I want you to do better in life 
than I've been able to do. And I want you to have better than I've been able to have. I think that is something that all of us have said at one time or another to our children. But when I look back on mom and dad's life, they lived in a very good time. We didn't have all the technology then that we've got now. Back in those days, children rode bicycles or played baseball or shot marbles or picked up jack stones. Uh, but now we find our children sitting in front of a computer or if uh, they're fortunate enough to have an iPhone or a a smartphone. You know what I learned about smartphones? You got to be smart to operate them. Whenever I got my first one, I found out that it wasn't a smartphone, it was a dumb phone. And somebody said, No, preacher, the phone's not dumb, you are. <laughs> and so I had to learn how to use it. But that's where our kids are today. They have strong thumbs, okay? Strong thumbs. But here is a mother who's burdened about the boy. This is also a picture of true life. Listen, what mother ever reared a son or a daughter without anxious moments of, of their well-being? I've got a son who is a police officer. And I stay concerned about his well-being. All the time. I've also got a son who is a school teacher slash gospel preacher. And uh, to be honest with you, with all of the school shootings that's going on in these modern times, I stay concerned about my boy. But as concerned as I may be, a mother's concern is so much deeper. So here's the mother of Jesus who is concerned about her son that she cannot find. So the third thing that we see in our text is that we have here a mother whose son was lost. Now it's a bad thing for a son or a daughter to be lost. You see, one of the greatest things that we need to do as parents is point our children to Jesus. Now, I, I, I wish that I could tell you that our children readily accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But many times they don't. Many times we find that our children, our sons and our daughters can be prodigals. And we could go to the... Uh, the Gospels and find the prodigal son and read that story. But if you have sown the seeds of faith in your children, always know there will be times that those seeds of faith will, will rear their heads up. And that's so blessed. Whenever that happens, it's such a blessing. I used to be so, so concerned about my police son. He's not here to defend himself, so I can tell this story. Uh, he, he's not where I'd like for him to be, but he's not where he used to be. I wish that he had a closer walk with God. But I learned one day that maybe his walk with God was a little closer than I thought it was. A gentleman got run over on a bicycle in Tifton. One day when he was uh, an over-the-road policeman instead of a detective, and he was the first one on the scene. And his sergeant called me and uh, said, Preacher, I just want you to know you don't need to be worried about Daniel's faith anymore. And I said, what do you mean? He said, when I got there, said he had that fellow's hands cupped in his arms, said the fellow had bled all over him, 
and said he was sitting there and said, Father, do you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior? If things, things are looking bleak for you, are you saved? Are you ready to meet the Lord? And he said, I looked at him and he said, Daniel, you can't do that. And said he looked at me and said he didn't crack a smile. And he said, what if it was you that had been run over? What if it was you that were dying? I just wanted to make sure that this man was going to make heaven his home. The man lived. Did you hear me? The man lived and went to my son and said, Thank you for sharing your faith with me. But we burdened. We have burdens about our children and where they may be. Listen, he was not in the company. He was gone. The parents had went a day's journey without him. Mothers in this age should find themselves sorrowful over sons and daughters who are lost, who, who needs to be saved by the grace of God. We ought to do our best to point our children to the Lord Jesus Christ. But to be able to point our children to the Lord Jesus Christ, we've got to know who He is. We've got to have a personal relationship with Him. Listen to me, mothers, this morning. The devil will tell you that you can't win your own family to the Lord. Don't you believe a word of it. That's one of the biggest lies out of hell that's ever been told. If you don't win your children to the Lord, who's going to? Well, how do I do it, preacher? Share the word of God with them and live the life of a godly mother before them. Your life could be the only Bible that they'll ever read. So let them see Jesus in you. The fourth thing that we have here, we have a mother who is baffled by her son's response. Three days they looked for him. Three days they sought to find him. And here they are going to the temple. Well, we, we saw him last at the temple. Let's go to the temple. And they find him at the temple sitting with the doctors of the law, the religious leaders of that day. And he is astonishing the religious leaders of that day by being able to talk to them, by being able to answer their questions, by being able to even have a conversation with them. And notice, when Mama gets there, now at times it's changed a little bit. I got away from my Mama one time. I did. I was just a little fella. Y'all know how she got me back? No, she grabbed the lobe of my ear and pulled me. She got me. Like to pull my ear off. But I can see right now the mother of Jesus. Boy, what do you mean? We left four days ago. We've been about crazy, worried about you. What do you mean? When we left, you should have left. And Jesus said, Mama, don't you understand why I'm here? You of all people should understand because the angel appeared to you. God told you what my mission was going to be. Mama, don't you understand? I've got to be about my father's business. To raise a child is to feel at times like we don't understand him or her.
Would you like for me to illustrate? My bad. Anybody understand that? If you're going to reach young folk, you better learn to understand their language. I had one to accidentally back into me with a buggy at the grocery store not long ago. And he said, Oh, I'm so sorry, my bad. And I stopped and I said, what? He said, oh, that means I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. I said, I thought you was going to tell me how bad you was. <laughs> he said, oh, no, that's, that. he said, bad means good. I said, what? <laughs> he said, bad means good. I said, no, bad means bad. Good means good. Anybody dig where I'm coming from? Huh? Listen, to raise a child is to feel at times that we don't understand them. And we feel helpless in the face of the mystery of the working that's going on in their minds. But spiritual growth and development can always Bring about a mystery. The fifth thing that we see in this is that we have here a mother of great wisdom. If we go back over and we look at that verse, the Bible says that she kept all of these sayings in her heart. Every worthy mother has a place to keep secrets in her heart. That is, she didn't scatter abroad her misgivings to the neighbors or the friends, but she kept her own counsel. The sixth thing that we see is we have a mother, a mother, a mother, a mother, a mother, not a mother, a mother, a mother here of meditation. She kept all these sayings, and the Bible said, and she pondered them. She meditated on them. We have a mother here that had time to pray for her boy. Now, a lot of you mothers, your child is grown and gone living on their own and have family and children of their own. That means you're a grandmother now. A grandmother. You know what's good about grandchildren? You get to spoil them. You get to feed them chocolate. And many times you get to send them home, not in your case. <laughs> but let me just say this. If I couldn't send them home, I'd keep them. Because that's how much I love them. Yesterday we had the opportunity to celebrate our youngest son's boy's 10th birthday at a skating ring. Did you hear me? I said at a skating ring. We walked into the skating ring and this young lady looked at my wife and says are you going skating? <laughs> my wife's quick answer was no. <laughs> no. What a glorious day it was. We celebrated a grandson's birthday. Listen, you can't change 
some of the things that maybe have been instilled into your child. But mothers, there's one thing you can always do for your child. You can pray for your child. You can pray for your child. She had time to ponder life's big questions and to live close to her son. And in conclusion, here we have a mother who was a success. The Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom and in favor with God and man. God's greatest desire is for us to lead our children to a place to where they can indeed grow in wisdom and stature with the Lord. Amen? Amen. What a great mother Mary was to Jesus. A fine example, not only for us to make ourselves better mothers, but for us dads to make ourselves better dads as well. Stand with me if you will. Father, how grateful and thankful we are now for your word and we pray that you'll use it for your glory. As we have a time of invitation, speak, O Lord, to hearts and move upon those who maybe need to do business with you in an altar of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.